Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, down here, up there, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just, just a beautiful day. Yeah. yeah just a beautiful right day here in New York City, the big city of dreams. The, 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 the city that never sleeps rested a little bit easier last night because yesterday the NYPD arrested subway shooter suspect Frank James after it got... <laughs> Feels nice. Don't have to worry about your kids in the subway or anything. Uh, they, they arrested him after they got a tip on its Crime Stoppers hotline. You know the number. 800-588-2300. Crime Stop. <laughs> that is not the number. Whoever... <laughs> Whoever made the call is a hero who stands up to receive uh, up to a $50,000 reward, right? Unfortunately, it is unclear who alerted the police because there were scores of calls and an array of people took credit for turning him in. Plus, to collect the award, you had to be the 19th caller and say the phrase that pays. <laughs> crime Stoppers is New York's number one crime stopping hotline, stopping crimes from the 80s, 90s, and today, Baba Booey. <laughs> one person. One, per one person claiming to have dropped a dime on James is 21-year-old Zach Tahan, a security camera technician who was working in a store nearby when he saw James through one of the security cameras. You hear that, MTA? Cameras work so much better <laughs> when they work. <laughs> At all. 800 by 80. Now, Tahan uh, is a Syrian immigrant who's observing Ramadan, and he became a social uh, media sensation last night with his explanation of how he helped nab the suspect. I say, you know what? We need to catch this guy. And I was working, and I catched him. God, thank God. People think I am crazy, like maybe think people I am in drug, but I'm not. I'm fasting. Yeah. <laughs> He's just fasting. Makes you a little... <laughs> can make you a little loopy when you're fasting. And he had to make that clear that it was just because he was fasting because, and this is true, he was standing in front of a sign that said, need cannabis delivered? <laughs> After this week, yes. <laughs> Several others have claimed responsibility and to complicate the situation even further, law enforcement officials have now said that James himself may have called the tip line. That is going to be an awkward award ceremony. <laughs> Mr. James, here's a key to the city, a check for $50,000, and a uh, pair of handcuffs. Take the key away. Take the key away from him. <laughs> so, New Yorkers, you can relax and return to the subway. It's just as safe and clean as you remember. <laughs> Speaking of uh, fighting the bad guys, the Ukrainian military announced that a Russian warship has been seriously damaged in the Black Sea after... <laughs> after Ukrainian forces struck the ship with anti-ship Neptune missiles. I'm surprised. I'm surprised they're called Neptune missiles because Russia, Ukraine's kicking Uranus. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Double teaming me. Yeah. Over there. There you go. At first, Russia downplayed the damage to the vessel, but late this afternoon, the Kremlin's military spokesman released this statement. You sank my battleship. <laughs> it's true. Today, Russian state media confirmed that the warship Moskva had sunk. Of course, since it's Russian state media, they had to spin it as a positive. Today, battleship Moskva begins new mission to denazify Bikini Bottom and finally get secret to Krabby Patty. <laughs> of course, that, that I'm sure I did the accent right. I have, I have a really drifting Russian accent. It gets, a, it gets Italian very quickly. <laughs> of course, Russia claims the goal of their invasion was to prevent the eastward expansion of NATO, but the attempt to intimidate their neighbors seems to have backfired because now Sweden and Finland are making moves to join NATO. It could be. This is huge news. No one saw it. It could be the most shocking Nordic alliance since black licorice joined forces with salt. <laughs> Is it candy or a dirty snow tire? Pick a lane. <laughs> Yesterday, the Swedish and Finnish prime ministers held a joint press conference where Finnish Prime Minister Sanaa Marin said, 
Finland was ready to make a decision on joining NATO within weeks. Well, they have to. Their coupon is about to expire. <laughs> Refer a friend, get one month of NATO free with promo code SUCKITPUTIN. Over the weekend, yeah, hell yeah. Over the weekend, uh, Prime Minister Marine explained, Russia is not the neighbor we thought it was. <laughs> what neighbor did you think it was? <laughs> Just listen to Russia's State Farm jingle. Like a good neighbor, we bomb your house! <laughs> now, this move is a little risky, as Russia has repeatedly warned Finland against joining NATO, threatening serious military and political consequences. Oh, damn. That's not what I meant when I wished this war would finish. Damn you, monkey paw! <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> Cursed! I wish... I wish not. Monkey paw. Sweden... Sweden is expected to join NATO, too, if only to keep the Russians from seizing their strategic reserve of scars guards. <laughs> now, none of this has stopped Russian officials from issuing more threats. Take deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council and chef declaring, that's a spicy a turnip. <laughs> Dmitry Medvedev. Medvedev, who used to be the Russian prime minister and the Russian president before doing whatever the hell his new no-show job is, wrote a post on Telegram in which he threatened Russia would build up nuclear forces in the Baltic Sea area if Sweden and Finland joined NATO. One problem, according to the Lithuanian defense minister, Russia already has nuclear weapons in the Baltic region. Okay, you can't threaten to do the thing you're already doing. That's like sending a ransom note that says, send us $1 million or we will cut up your magazine. <laughs> the whole world... Okay. Hi. 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 hello. Hey. The whole world has turned against Russia, including the Republic of Netflix, which suspended service there last month. Now, Russian Netflix subscribers launched a class action lawsuit for loss of service. Then, after a few hours, a screen popped up saying, are you still suing? And you had to click yes. <laughs> it's not just the viewers who are mad, because Netflix also halted the development and acquisition of all Russian-made TV shows and films. That is rough news for anyone. Sure, it's the right thing to do, but... It's, it's rough news for anyone excited about the new season of Bridger Tato. <laughs> Fun fact. The Viscount's sexy butt is potato. <laughs> Spring is it's nice. It's nice. A little butter, a little sour cream. A couple of bacon bits. You got it, baby. Spring is here, the sun is out, the flowers are up, and there's a special something in the air. Unfortunately, that something is COVID because cases have been going up on the East Coast. And two new Omicron subvariants are spreading quickly in New York. Now, scientists aren't sure just how they're spreading through Manhattan so fast, but they suspect they're using city bikes. <laughs> these variants, keep in mind, these variants are not your grandpa's Omicron. They are sub sub variants of the BA2 subvariant called BA.2.12 and BA.2.12.1. Come on, scientists. Can't you be more creative than letters and numbers? People would take these variants more seriously if you gave them cool names like Bid Back Greg or <laughs> No Good Gretchen. Sorry, I can't come to dinner. I'm laid up in bed with Big Bad Greg. <laughs> Big Bad Greg, that's hard to say. The variants, that's okay. You're too kind. That's really too nice. The new variants are the most highly transmissible strains of COVID identified to date. How do these things keep getting more transmissible than the most transmissible virus of all time? This is like when we were told the most extreme Oreo was double stuff, <laughs> but then it mutated to mega stuff, <laughs> and now we're up to most stuff. Next, they're just gonna lower us headfirst into stuff. <laughs> There's good news, that you can fight, that fights COVID. That's one of the treatments. Oh, this is, this is something. There's, there's news about Tesla billionaire and groom giving the worst possible I do, Elon Musk. 
A week ago, Musk uh, became Twitter's largest shareholder after buying $2.89 billion worth of the company. Okay, did no one tell him you can read the tweets for free? <laughs> and after his big investment, he spent the week sitting down with experts to plan a long-term business strategy, by which I mean he posted a bunch of trolly nonsense, like a meme of himself smoking weed with the caption, Twitter's next board meeting is gonna be lit, and a poll suggesting they change the name to Titter. <laughs> One of the greatest innovators of our time, folks. It's like when Thomas Edison debuted his marvelous incandescent light boob. <laughs> but... But that stock purchase wasn't enough for the Musk man, because last night, Musk offered to buy Twitter for $43 billion in cash. Oh, my God! He could do so much with that money. Uh, address world hunger. Fix climate change. Get a decent haircut. <laughs> in a statement, in a statement, Musk said he decided his initial investment wasn't enough and now believes Twitter needs to be transformed as a private company and that his goal is to make Twitter the platform for free speech around the globe. Hey, you ding -a -ling. <laughs> Twitter's already an international platform for free speech. You know how I know that? Because no one at Twitter can stop me from tweeting, suck at Elon Musk in every language. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is the one...